Passion Robot Hunter is a four episode long OVA from 1993. I had originally picked this up because at the time I was watching Cashier and Sins and I was a bit left in the dark with some of the characters and the overall setting here so I decided to go back and check out some of the source material before I commit myself to watching the entire series of that and thankfully these series are not actually related. Cashier and Robot Hunter is the only anime that literally gives me a headache. I have a headache right now because I watched this. I watched some of it yesterday too and I had a headache yesterday. So it's not because there's a bad story or a bad uh, voice acting or bad animation or anything. It's what they do with the fights. Look at this. Doesn't this want to make you want to have a headache right here? Who wants to look at something like this and whose idea would it be to put something like that in an anime? But no, you're not done because you have to see stuff like that throughout all four episodes. Thankfully, it's not as bad as it is within the first episode, which is a little clip that you see right here from the first episode. It doesn't happen that often throughout the rest of the four episodes, but still, it gives me a headache nonetheless. So moving on to the story of Cashier and Robot Hunter, this is set in the future after humans have created robots and robots have become self-aware and began creating other robots that are also self-aware and they took over humanity basically. In this four episode OVA we see the robots taking over the world and enslaving humanity, putting them in work labor camps. And there's a lot of contradictions within the show, there's a lot of uh, plot holes here as well because first of all, you have humans in these slave labor camps, you have giant robots that could easily do the work of a hundred humans in a single day but you've got these robots here cracking the whip and it's not like there's a limited amount of robots either they it's not like they can only put a certain amount of robots in certain places they create hundreds of robots here which uh, doesn't really make any sense why they would have all of the humans working for them and the humans aren't just doing stupid uh, menial tasks they're actually lifting these giant iron girders which I don't even understand how somebody would pick those up in the first place, but still they're having the humans do all the work for them. These humans have been enslaved for a long time, but that did not break their hopes. They have hopes of a hero to come and save them, a hero known as Cashern, who's actually real. He's a, a combination of robot and human, and he is very powerful. We will see him here ruthlessly ripping the head off of robots, punching straight through them, cutting them in half with his judo chop, and it's really awesome fights here. I really like the fights within this set, aside from the flashing lights. Cashern was originally a human who gave up his humanity in order to gain the power to defeat the Black King. The Black King is the one robot who rules over all of the other ones. He's the strongest one and all of them follow him and they do not let you forget about this throughout the entire four episodes here because a few times per each episode we'll hear numerous robots chanting, Hail the Black King! And, you know, we get it already. You know, he's your ruler. We get it. So basically what we see within these four episodes is Cashern going from location to location finding these robots and saving humans. Sometimes he's on the offense, sometimes he's on the defense, but he's just finding robots. You know, it's pretty simplistic as far as the plot goes. Having a simple story isn't a bad problem at all, but there's so many plot holes within Cashier and Sins. Like, first of all, why are the humans doing all the work, especially when you can have robots that can be created to perform a specific task, that you can have one robot that can easily outwork all of these humans that are in these work labor camps. Why would they do that? Secondly, Cashier has a special ability that can kill hundreds, if not thousands of robots that are in front of him with a single attack, but yet he comes face to face with the Black King either in episode 1 or in episode 2, I forget which one, and he could have killed him then. On top of that, Cashier and his solar power. There was one time where these clouds covered the sky and he couldn't get energy and he was running low, but then there was later on in the anime where he was running so low on energy that he could barely stand, but then he pulls out this attack that kills thousands of robots at once but yet he didn't really have the ability to stand because he was lacking the power and it wasn't anything that drained him to the point where he couldn't function either so he could have easily used that ability and it would have been stronger in the beginning. Anyway, so the plot of Cashier does have a lot of plot holes and it is pretty corny at times but I like that it was a little bit darker as well. That's one thing that I noticed that is consistent with Cashier that it can be pretty dark and for its 
time, I guess with 1993, this was pretty dark because you had people enslaved and you had humans being killed and it was kind of gruesome because you would have robots getting their head ripped off and there's one part here where this guy got crushed by this massive eye beam and he is squished. It's like falling halfway on his body right here and all of this blood's coming out. This guy comes up to him. Is he dead? He is squished by a massive eye beam and that's the first thing this guy says. Is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving on, the plot here is actually a bit serious, and I kind of like that, but then again, at the same time, it's all the corny stuff and all the plot holes that really uh, take away from the experience here. Uh, easily the most enjoyable part out of this entire four episode OVA were the fights. I like the fights aside from all of the flashy bits and having said that I enjoy this a lot less because of the flashy bits considering that the fights were my favorite part here. When Kashurn fights against these robots he will jump into the air and do all these flips and twists and turns like a gymnast and he'll just jump down and and chop them and he will deal with so many robots so quickly but the most satisfying fight out of this OVA series is the fight against the Black King. You have all of these other fights which are pretty cool and they don't last very long but this Black King fight it lasts for a few minutes and it was really enjoyable. You'll see Black King just punching a cash run through these walls and grabbing them by the neck and choking them and they really go all out on this fight and that's easily the best part of this OVA here plus they don't really do that whole flashy thing a whole lot in that fight. It's not as intense in that fight. So moving on to the overall presentation, talking about the art style here, this came out in 1993 and I think that it's beautiful. It's got a great usage of colors and also it's got a lot of contrast as well because you'll see a lot of colors in certain places and in other places it'll be really dark. But uh, the only problem that I have with the animation here is the robots. They look pretty funky because they're kind of fat looking and roundish and they look more like monsters and robots. Some of them look like robots that you would see out of an old Mega Man game, but, you know, I'm not really going to fault it for that because this did come out in 1993, and as far as the picture quality goes, I gotta give credit where credit is due. This is licensed by Discotech. I don't know if they had anything to do with that or not, but the picture quality here is crisp. For a DVD holding a OVA series that came out in 1993. So moving on to the audio, the only memorable song that you'll hear is the opening, and that's pretty good actually. As far as the voice acting goes, I watched uh, I watched some of this in subtitle, then I watched some of this in dub as well. And whenever I watch an English dub, I always watch it with the subtitles on just to see if they changed the dialogue any. And they kind of did that here, but they did it in a way that made certain things better and it made it fit the context of what was going on a little bit better. The actual English voice acting here itself, given the quality of the story here and all of the plot holes and everything, the English quality of the voice acting is actually pretty good. And I would recommend anyone out there who's going to watch this, just go ahead and watch it with the English dub. It's a more relaxed experience anyways. And it's not like you're sitting here watching something with that uh, deep or complex of a story to begin with. So it doesn't really matter. Overall, Caster and Robot Hunter, I would have to give this a five and a half. So the reason why I'm giving it such a low rating is first of all, the story is very simplistic. It's not a lot of depth to it. There's a lot of plot holes here. The animation is, and the fights here is what I'm really giving this most of its positive score based on. But then the fights are really taken away and also the animation is taken away some because of all of these bright flashing lights and that is a definite pet peeve of mine and I don't think anybody out there likes to watch these flashing lights. So anyway, if you've seen Casher and Robot Hunter, then let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. And also, if you've seen the original anime, let me know your thoughts about that as well. And let me know how you think they compare. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and also share it with your friends. I really appreciate all that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.